All right, gang, Mass 1700 here. Uh, th the purpose of this video is to just give you an opportunity to see how these types of problems are worked. Um, let me see if I can get this. There we go. Uh, see how these problems are worked with a spreadsheet. So uh, if you want, um, I, I'll tell you what I have. I think I have three or four problems I'm going to run through with the calculator. And um, this, is, this is bugging me, I'll tell you, right here. <laughs> Should have had this fixed beforehand. Uh, but, uh, but go ahead and get Excel up on the computer. And uh, I want to show you some really cool things that you can, um, uh, you can, you can uh, do on there to do the, do the same type of problem. So, again, the game plan here, I don't think I've made it very clear yet. The game plan here is to work these four problems with the calculator, just um, uh, kind of as review. And then we're going to uh, see how these things are worked uh, on, on uh, using Excel. Um, so if you've got a lot of uh, experience or even some experience with Excel, you're going to find this stuff to be really easy. I might be able to show you a few things. Um, but, uh, you know, I found teaching this class uh, a lot lately that, um, you know, I run into a lot of students who have no um, experience whatsoever with Excel. And uh, I, I think that... Um, I think you should have that. So, so gang, let's get going. Uh, the Smiths, whoever they are, intend to amortize the purchase of their home with equal monthly payments over 20 years. Their bank has offered a 4.1 annual interest rate. Uh, the house that they intend to purchase will sell for $350,000. Well, uh, the first thing I'd like to do is find the payment. So, gang, we should be really good at this. Uh, Really, really good, actually. So we have 20 years uh, times 12. And we have an interest rate of 4.1. And we're buying a big old fancy house. It's 350000 Make sure we get enough zeros. You guys, make sure your PYCYs are set the same. All right, so green enter. And we get our payment of 2139 Point thirty-two. So pay attention to rounding. Some of you have gotten a little sloppy on your rounding, and it's it's cost you some points. Uh, typically on uh, assignments, I don't correct rounding because you have infinitely many tries at this, so you can go back and do it again. But I do correct rounding issues on exams, so keep that in mind. All right, how much interest will they pay over the life of the loan? Guys, these are simple problems. All you do is you take, uh, I'm going to just put this in parentheses. I know that I'm going to pay 2139.42 uh, 12 months a year for 20 years. So if I take that amount, I'm going to pay the bank a total of 513000 What's scary in it? So, uh, but anyway, you can just subtract out how much you paid for the house, and the remaining has to be interest paid. Uh, so the interest that. Um, this couple will pay on this house is 163,000 uh, $460.80. So a lot of interest uh, over 20 years. Uh, something uh, to, to keep in mind, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work this real quickly because I'm gonna get on a tangent. But, uh, well, I'm not. But if, if you wanna kind of get something eye, eye, eyebrow raising, I guess, something that kind of makes you sit back and go, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, do this over 30 years. And uh, the amount of interest that you pay over 30 years is, is pretty alarming. Uh, how much interest will they pay in the first five years? Uh, well, guys, this is um, an easy problem with your calculator. Uh, you just have to go get your balance. And remember, that's at number nine. And so we went five years, but we are doing things in terms of months. So we have to have five times 12, which is 60. So they will have reduced their loan uh, from 350000 down to 287. So if I take 350000 and subtract how much their loan amount is, their payoff is, is sometimes called after 60 months, you can see that they have reduced their loan $62,717.49. But they paid a 
128,365.20. So guys, the difference between what they paid and how much they reduced their loan has to be the interest paid. So I can just take that and subtract the 62,717.49. So in the first five years alone, this company paid, or this company, this couple, paid $65,647.71 interest alone in the first five years. So if you kind of average that out, you can see that they're paying about $13,129 per year in interest. No, it's not going to work that way. The first year, they're not going to pay. The first year, they're going to pay more interest than they do in the second year, in the third year, and so on and so forth. And we'll see that when we get set up the spreadsheet. But uh, uh, nevertheless, over the first five years, on average, you're going to pay $13,129 per year. So you can break that down per month. On average, you're going to pay about $1,100 per month. Uh, if you want to break that down to a week, you're paying about 250 bucks. Only interest now. Interest per week on average. Uh, so about $250 per week interest only. You're not even reducing the principal. So if you're going to buy a house at $350,000, you better have a really good job or rich parents or something working for you. All right. Uh, during which month uh, do the Smiths reduce their debt to la less than half the amount that was initially financed? Well, what I would do here is I would use the trick that I showed in a previous video. Uh, I've got all the information in TVM Solver, so... Uh, what I can do is I can go to Y equal and set up my balance. So guys, remember, if it's not there, you just go to apps, you go to finance, you hit number nine, and then you have to be as a function of something, and we call that X. So X is going to be the balance after the first year, the second year, the third year. So X is going to run from zero to one to two to three, where X is the number of years after uh, the... Um, no, it won't. Actually, I'm wrong. It won't be years. It'll be months because we set this up in TVM Solver in months. So X will be the number of months. Uh, so guys, what we can do, is we can ta uh, set our table. And I'm not going to start at zero because I know in the zeroth month that... Uh, yeah, I, um, uh, well, I'll I tell you what, I am going to start at zero, but I'm going to go up by more than, um, than, than 10 months. I'm going to go up... Uh, by 24 months. So I'm going to increase this every two years. And it may make sense once I get this, I uh, come over here and look at my table. Now, what I'm looking for is I am looking for the, let me see, I don't know, that seems a little, okay. I'm looking for when this original loan, 350,000, drops down to half of the amount, which is 175,000. So I know that this thing had to reach 175,000 somewhere between the 120th and the 144th month. So I'm going to go back to table set, and I'm going to start this at 120, and I'm going to go up by one month now and get the, and look at it here. So what I'm looking for is what month did this thing go below 175,000? I know it's going to be down here close to 144. This takes a little bit more work on the calculator, but it's really, really easy on the spreadsheet. Okay, so I need to go up right here. So in the 143rd month, our balance was 176,000, yada, yada. So in the 144th month, the balance got down below uh, half its original amount. So they're uh, during which month uh, it'd be the 144th month. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to work these with the spreadsheet here in just a second. So I'll come back to this and uh, show you that we get the same answers. But I want to show you again how we work these with the calculator and how we work these um, with the spreadsheet. And these, these are types of problems you're going to see in your final exam too. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, gang, uh, John and Amy begin saving for retirement by making equal monthly payments of $150. Uh, 
uh, for 20 years into an account uh, earning 3.9 will be their, their value after uh, 20 years. Okay, and so with the calculator, easy stuff. So we're making monthly payments for 20 years. We have an interest rate of 3.95. We start out with nothing. We put $150 in per month. We make that positive because we're adding to something. We're not taking away from a loan. And we'll come in. We want to make this 12 PYCY. So we'll come in and see our future value. And our future value is only 54708 dollars and 14 cents so this couple retired or i'm sorry uh tried to plan for retirement um and um well you know saved 150 per month but really 54,000 isn't that much uh for retirement uh how much interest is earned over the life of the loan so guys again this is easy Take the total amount that you end up with and subtract out how much money of your own you put in there. They put 150 times 12 times 20. There was no lump sum payment, so we don't have to consider that in this case. So the interest earned would be 100, uh, or I'm sorry, 18,000. 14. Now, uh, how much interest was earned in the final five years? Well, what we need to do is we need to find out how much money we started out with in the final five, five years. years. So, guys, that's, again, really easy. So we want what? We want final five years would be starting after five, 15 years. 12 months of, of uh, monthly payments. So it's tempting to put five in there, but five would get you your balance after five years. We want the balance after 15 years because we're looking at the interest earned in the final five years, okay? So they start out with 36,763 going into the 16th year. So the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th year uh, are the final five years that we have in, under investigation. So we want to figure out how much did they end up with. And let's subtract what they started out with going into the final five years. So their account increased over the final five years 17945 because that wasn't all interest. They, in the final five years, put in $150 per month for those five years. So the interest earned in the last five years was 8900 8, 8945.07. So almost half of the interest over the 20 years, almost half, half, uh, if you double 8,900, you're at, uh, what, uh, 17,800, so you're just 900 bucks short of half. Almost half of your money was earned in the final five years. Uh, now, after 20 years, John and Amy decide to withdraw $3,000 per month. Now, this is where it gets really kind of, kind of freaky, kind of sad actually these people have saved and now they want to pull out three thousand per month but you gotta remember they only put in 150 a month so how long will it take uh because again the calculator makes it really easy uh, now we'll put a zero there for the placeholder i start out with fifty four thousand seven oh eight point fourteen I'm going to pull out 3000 per month, and I want to see how long it takes to exhaust the savings account. 
Hey guys, remember, N is going to be in months. So when I go green, solve, I get 18 months. <laughs> it's kind of freaky, 18.8 .8 months. So what do we uh, uh, round it to the nearest month? So guys, they get to um, exhaust their savings in uh, about 19 months. And they wouldn't even get to pull out the entire $3,000 in that 19th month uh, they would only get to pull out part of that so uh that's kind of depressing these people have worked hard and saved a little bit of money every month for 20 years and they don't even get to draw away from that at three thousand dollars a month that's three thousand dollars a month isn't that much money um really i mean you know but i guess at that time if you're if you're retired and you got everything paid off and i guess three thousand that's thirty six thousand a year um, I guess it just depends on how you want to live. Um, that's up to you guys. None of my business. Okay. Now this is a hard problem. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you this is a uh, this this is challenging. All right, very challenging. So Steve and Mary wish to retire in 35 years and would like to prepare by making equal monthly payments into an account that earns. Uh, three point nine percent interest rate. How much money should they invest per month to guarantee that they can withdraw five thousand per month for twenty years after their retirement? You can assume that they will continue to earn three point nine percent interest rate. But guys, this is a problem. Where we have to work backwards. We have to, first of all, how much money, this is a question, do they need? And then secondly, how to achieve this? So how do we achieve that amount? So the first thing let's do, let's find out how much they're going to need. Well, their goal is for 20 years per month drawing 3.9 percent they want to pull out five thousand dollars per month how long will it take to exhaust that so we can go up to FV and we can hit enter and we can see that they're going to need $832,000. So they're going to need a whopping $832,000. That's kind of scary, isn't it? 328.997, so technically this would be 832.329 by the time we round, okay? So $832,000 is what they're going to need. Now, the next thing we're going to see is how are we going to achieve that? Well, the problem says they want to make monthly payments for 35 years in preparation. All right. They're going to get 3.9% on their money. They start out with $0. They're going to add something to it, but we'll come back and get that in just a second. And they need to achieve 832. I just closed my mind. Uh, eight hundred and thirty-two thousand three hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Now, how are we going to achieve that, now, guys? Your answer is going to be negative, but that's just one of the nuances uh, of uh, TVM Solver. But they're going to have to achieve. They're going to have to put in nine hundred and thirty dollars and fifty-two cents per month. Um. That's a pretty dedicated investor right there that can put in a thousand bucks a month essentially. 
a uh, thousand bucks a month for 35 years. These people should retire comfortably if they're uh, if they're that disciplined. Of course, who knows? Maybe they're making 50 billion a year or something. I don't know. Never know, right? Uh, number four. Uh, here's a spreadsheet problem. This is going to be back to the form that I like, not the form that uh, my math lab uses. So uh, this breaks it down to where you have a beginning balance, uh, you have an interest for the period, you add the two together, and then you subtract the payment. So how much is their monthly payment? Well guys, that's really easy because that's just the difference between those two numbers. So when I take uh, 5,027.08 minus 4,804.35, uh, I get a payment of $222.73 per month. To the nearest tenth of a percent, what was the uh, annual interest rate? Well, guys, from this part here, I can take this information, and I can use I equal PRT. Now, guys, remember, this is compounded over the... Over the uh, uh, entire duration of the loan, but each individual period is calculated on a simple interest plan. So the interest is 2708 on a principal of 5000. The R I don't know, but I know it's over one month, which is one twelfth of a year. So, gang, what I would do here is I would take the 2708. I would multiply by 12. So essentially what I did right there is I multiplied this side by 12 and this side by 12. So now it's pretty clear to see that to isolate the R I need to divide by 5,000. Just hit divide by 5,000. So the interest rate looks like it is 6.5%. Now the next question, what will be the balance after 18 year, or 18 months? And you look up here and you're like, well, how the heck am I supposed to do that? I've only got three months. Well, use your calculator. All right. So let's get the, the information in the calculator. We've got enough information to do that now. We know we're making monthly payments over two years. We know that the interest rate was 6.5%. We know the present value is 5000 and we want to be a good creditor and we want to pay off our money, so pay off our debt, I'm sorry. So green and we'll see that our payment turns out to be $22.73. Now what we can do is we can go second function quit, go apps, go finance, hit number nine to get balance. And we need the balance after 18 months. Since we're paying monthly payments, 18 months is what we need. So our monthly, our balance uh, is uh, $1,311.41. All right, gang, that was fun, right? Can't even say that without smiling. It is kind of fun. I mean, you know, making money and buying stuff and all that. All right, gang, I'm going to show you all how to work these problems using Excel. So um, uh, I'm going to upload, uh, you know, this will be uploaded into, um, into Blackboard. So, um, you know, you can print it out or have it on your screen, you know, whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to bring up Excel. And I thought I had Excel. Yeah, here's Excel right here. Yeah, if I'm going to work the first problem, uh, where we, uh, I don't know. You know what might be better? Um, let's let's do some fancy stuff here. Very cool. All right, that's probably the best. 
uh, what I want to do on this uh, to work the um, the spreadsheet. I don't really understand why that's. Um, All right, uh, to work the spreadsheet, what I want to do is I want to come over here and get some uh, just kind of random cell. Not really random, but I want to leave my first four columns open. So I want to uh, cell over here in uh, the fifth. And what I can do here is I can go equal PMT. And what it will show me, it'll show me that I need my rate, my N per, my present value, my future value, and the type. Now, what does rate mean? I'm going to click that, and it doesn't tell me. So I'm going to assume the rate is, uh, we have, what, a 4%? So I'm going to go 0 0.041 divided by 12. Now, the next thing it's going to want me to put in is the n per so i have uh, 12 times 20 and the next thing it wants me to put in is present value and the present value is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars The next thing it wants me to put in is my future value. I want that to be zero. And the next thing it wants me to put in is type. And I'm pretty sure type zero is ordinary interest. Now, when I do that, uh, notice that I get the same payment. It's got a negative there. The same payment as I got over here of the 2139.42. Okay. Now, to start a spreadsheet, what I would do is I would start out with the, um, the, the, big, the, the starting balance, 350000 And, guys, we're going to start something called kind of like a recursive relation. I want to set up a pattern of things that I want repeated. So I'm going to do that by working with cells and not necessarily numbers. So if you know anything about spreadsheets at all, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, this is going to be a new learning experience. Now, I want to come in and hit equal, and I want the value. I want 350000 but I don't want type 350 because I want it to be the cell that's in the first position. I want that to be multiplied by 0 0.041 divided by 12 to get the interest for the first month. The next thing I want to do is I want to work with that cell I want to go equal to. I'm going to click on this once. I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to click on B1 once, and I'm going to hit enter. The next thing I want to do is I want to come in and go equal to, and I want to take the value in C1, so I'm just going to click it, and I'm going to subtract my payment. and hit enter. Now, the first thing I notice is I don't have this in dollars, so I'm just going to highlight those, those first four columns there, and I'm going to go over here and do general, and I am going to do accounting, and it will turn it into dollar signs. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to start this over for the second month. So I'm just going to go equal. I want to bring this amount down there. So I just click it. Don't type 349.056.41 because it won't allow me to set up the recursion. Okay. So I'm just going to click it. And then I'm going to hit equal to. Now comes the cool part. I've got everything set up in kind of one complete cycle for one month. Now I want to repeat that. So I'm going to highlight these top three numbers and just bring that down. And notice it repeated what I did for the first line with the second line. 
Now I want to repeat what I did in the second line. So what, what do we need here? We've got 200, uh, uh, 20 years, 12 months. We have 240 months. So guys, I want to drag this down to where I see 240. Depending on your computer, it's uh, going to work a little f uh, faster probably. And what I've done by that, you'll see that after the 240th month, after the loan is done, uh, you, you would have actually technically 33 cents coming back because it says negative. Now, this rarely ever comes out to zero perfectly, but it'll come out to something really close to zero. Now, what this allows you to do, it allows you to work these types of problems really easy. For example, part B, how much interest will they pay over the life of the loan? Well, guys, I can go down and I see that my interest column is this B column. And I know there's some way that I can just go sum, but I never do can seem to figure that out. So what I can do here is I can just come down and go equal and type the word sum, left parentheses, and then I'm just going to highlight this value here and I'm just going to drag it all the way up. Be patient. It'll get there. Don't take your finger off of it. If you take your finger off of it, you got to start over. All right. So I've highlighted all that. I'm going to come up here and end the parentheses and hit enter. So guys, I have 163,460.47. I'm off a little bit. Uh, don't sweat it. You're not off enough to make uh, much difference. You're off uh, over a period of 20 years. On a $350,000 home, you're off 33 cents. No, yeah, 33 cents. I think we'll live, okay? And uh, we're off 33 cents. Gee, I wonder where that 33 cents was, right over there. So if you subtracted the 33 cents from the value that we have right here, uh, you would come out exactly what we get right here. Now, how much interest will they pay in the first five years? years. Guys, this is really cool. Let's just get rid of that. Let's just clear it out. Okay. Let's go equal sum. Let's scroll all the way to the top and just highlight what? For five years, it's going to be the first 60 numbers. Do you think I set these up for my payments? For like my house? I'm the biggest nerd ever. It's really cool to do this kind of because it's uh, it's something you can do and you know, it's really cool when you catch your bank or somebody in a mistake and you can go down and give them a hard time but make sure <laughs> make sure you know what you're doing when you go down and give them a hard time don't screw up and go down there and call somebody out and then you go down and they point out that you made a mistake and they embarrass you okay don't do that yeah you know, make sure I had a student I had her in class I think two years ago two summers ago in Mass 1700, she's buying a car. And she felt like that the people she's buying a car from weren't being upfront with her. And it turns out they weren't. Uh, they were charging her about $20 extra per month on her payment than what they told her the interest rate that she was getting. So I helped her out with it. And uh, they uh, and, she, and she caught them in a lie, which uh, ultimately I hope ended up helping her out. So, But, uh, you know, make, make sure you know what you're doing. You know, don't, don't like create a spreadsheet like incorrectly and then go in be all really badass and break bad on the banker and then then show you show you that you didn't do what you were supposed to do uh all right so part d during which month do the uh smiths reduce their debt to half i mean dude this is really easy i mean when does it go below one hundred seventy-five thousand in the 144th month so, gang, these are really easy to do on your spreadsheet, especially when you get into situations where you're trying to get specific interest uh, for, like, you know, the first five years, the last five years, whatever it may be. Uh, it, it, it makes it really nice uh, for those situations. Some people think, ah, it's too much work. Heck with it. I trust the bank. They're not going to mess with me. Um, 
That's okay. That, uh, Your bank probably won't, but uh, uh, people selling you cars may. All right, let's get rid of all this. I'm just going to go over and just get rid of all that. So I'm going to hit delete. And now I'm going to set up the second problem. problem. And I'm going to do something that is really wacky in terms of teaching. I'm going to do this wrong. I'm going to do it wrong first just to show you that you don't get what you're supposed to get if you set this up the way you think that you would set it up. The way you would think you would set this up is you would do your $150. You would calculate your interest. So you're going to take this amount times uh, 0.0395 <clears throat> divided by 12. Guys, don't forget to divide by 12. So the interest that you earned the first month was 49 cents. So you want to take that amount, 150, plus the interest. And after the first month, you end up with $150.49. Do like I did before. Hit equal. Bring this down. Highlight the two parts in the first line. Bring it down. And now let's make it look like money. All right. Uh, now I want to bring this all the way down. And again, we did uh, 20 years for 12 uh, months a year, right? So I need to come to 240. And... Okay, I messed up. This is my fault. What we've got to do here is we've got to come here, and when we come down to this right here, we have to add another $150. So that wasn't the mistake. That was just a bonehead mistake. So if I do that, and then do what I'm supposed to do, bring this down, and then bring this down to 240 because we had to add 150 each month. That was just a bonehead mistake. Um, that wasn't the mistake that I did purposely. That was a mistake I did because I'm a bonehead. All right, now this is done right now, okay? So I come down to 240, and I've got 54,888. And you're like, now wait a minute, that's a hundred and, what, $80 off? And you might say, well, that's rounding. No, it's not rounding. You did it wrong. All right. Now, guys, let's get rid of that and let's do it right. I'm going to delete everything. All right. The reason we did this wrong is we worked away from what's called the ordinary interest schedule. And this is the reason I do this problem to point out that ordinary interest literally means at the end of the period. The payment is made at the end of the period. And I'm going to be ad nauseum here. I'm going to repeat, uh, be repetitive. But again, you go in and buy a car. They're going to tell you 30 days later you make your first payment. That's because you're making your payment at the end of the first period. Well, the same thing with investment. You make your payment at the end of the period. This comes in as your beginning balance. You calculate your interest. And then you take this plus this 
plus your 150 at the end of the period. Now what we can do is we can highlight that bottom line. We can come down to 240. And you are going to see that we get exactly to the penny what we got in the calculator. Again, gang, the ordinary interest schedule, and that's what I'm teaching you throughout this class. Throughout the mathematics of finance, we are using the ordinary interest schedule because it's the most common. Uh, so your everything is made at the end of the period. If you put that 150 first, you're making it at the beginning of the period. Now, I don't know if anyone uh, kept that... Uh, uh, number that we had down there but if I had gone in here and done this and come down at the bottom and set this up and come went over here and hit begin that I would have got the same number I got before guys don't do that make sure that things sit in so you get the correct um, uh, the correct uh, numbers okay now how much interest is earned over the life of the investment well gang that's easy just like before, I come down to the bottom, you don't have to, but I go sum, left parentheses, and I just go up and do a fill in. Fill down, fill up, whatever you want to call it. Uh, do your right parentheses. So you'll see you get 18,708.14, which is exactly what we get right here. How much interest is earned in the final five years? Gang, this is really easy. Let's get rid of all that. So let's go equal. Sum. So the final five years would be what? The, the, the five years would start uh, at, um, so it, um, so we'd have the 15th year, 15 times 12. So the 180th month. This 180 uh, would, let's see, how would that be? The 180th month would be the beginning of the fifth year, right? Yeah. Mm, I don't think I should think about that. Nine thousand sixty-five. That's what I thought. I don't. I shouldn't include the. Uh, let me see now. The one hundred and eightieth month would be the final month in the fifth year. Yeah, I messed that up. Uh, so we should go. Um, actually, equal sum. So we should start with the one hundred and eighty-first month because we're starting the final five years. Yeah. I didn't seem right. Something kind of cool. And uh, you'll see when we do that, we get the same uh, answer exactly. Now, something kind of cool, uh, this thing here you're putting in 150 a month. And you can come down here and see that uh, beginning in the 212th month, uh, which would be somewhere, what is 212 divided by 12? Somewhere around the 17th, 18th year, your interest is more than what you're adding to the, uh, to, to the principal. So that'd be a really cool question. In what month does your interest become more than the payment that you're actually making? All right. Um, so how much interest is in the final five years? So guys, we got that. Uh, after 20 years, uh, John and Amy decide to withdraw $3,000 a month. So, um, you know what? I would um, clear contents. So I'm going to start out with 54708 There's going to be some interest that's going to be drawn that month.
the value is going to increase. And then we're going to come out and take out some money. What we say, three thousand dollars? Yeah. Start it over, equal to that cell. Drag the cells that aren't affected, uh, that don't have something below it. And then drag it out. Now guys, you really don't know how far to go here. You just, I just like to just start dragging it until I feel pretty comfortable. All right, so red means we're in the red. <laughs> so I need to come up and see where the block turns to red. So in the 19th month, uh, we wouldn't be able to take out the entire $3,000 because we went $487.58 over. So in the 19th month, you would only be able to take out uh, about 20, what, 25, 13, 25, take, take, um, Take three thousand a month. You're not going to be able to take the three thousand out because you've only got twenty five oh four starting in the eighteenth month. But anyway, in the nineteenth month, this will really get into to trouble. Uh, problem number three. I'm not going to do that one on spreadsheet because I'm just going to tell you straight up. Uh, I think this problem is easier done with the calculator. Calculator. All right, I think it's easier with the uh, TVM solver. Uh, this one, if uh, you're kind of wondering, did we get it right? Clear the contents. Uh, let's take it out, 5,000. We found that the interest rate was that times point. 065 divided by 12 equal to that amount plus that amount and come in and subtract your payment. Payment was 222.73. Guys, let the recursion Recursive relation starts go equal. Click that cell, hit enter. Highlight the top three cells, draw, drag them down to line two. Uh oh, I messed up. Highlight the bottom four. And we are doing this for what? Uh, two years, so come all the way down to 24. 24, we can see that we've got our loan paid off. Uh, so the question, what would be the balance after 18 months? So it would be 1311.41. Off a little bit because the 6.5 didn't turn out exactly. And the payment didn't turn out. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. The interest rate didn't turn out to be exactly 6.5. Uh, gang, it's all I got. Take care.